Hello and welcome to Getaway. I'm on board the Scenic Sapphire exploring the spectacular south of France. This region is filled with beautiful villages and castles on the hills and wineries and the best way to experience it is on the river. This is the mighty Rhone. We've made it down river and moored in Avignon the ideal port from which to explore this region of Provence, including the nearby village of Gaul. It's been officially named as one of the most beautiful villages in France. It was built on the mountaintop with the abbey as a centrepiece and the whole village built around it. And because of its beauty and just how well it's been preserved, it's even been referred to as the Parthenon of Provence. So everything started in the 11th century with the construction of the castle and then the village developed around on the hilltop. And uh, so in the Middle Ages, it was a difficult time, uh, lots of war going on. So people would find refuge in the castle and would always stick around the castle. For centuries, Gord thrived. A dye, deep red in colour, was produced here from local ochre and the village was home to all sorts of craftsmen who used the colourful dyes in both their work and in the church. This is unlike any church that I have ever seen. It's beautiful. Yeah, what do you like about it, the colours? Yeah, the colours and just the, the, the artwork that they've used in here. Chemical dyes were developed in the 20th century, and together with an earthquake in 1909, Gord began to decline, and most of the houses here were abandoned. And then it was rediscovered by artists, mm -hmm. who actually found it absolutely gorgeous to have all these houses abandoned and in ruin, and decided to just take over. Since then, Gord has rebounded. And the village today is a charming labyrinth of cafes, boutiques and galleries. The view from here is just superb. Like, that is unbelievable. Yeah, it's stunning, isn't it? And so you see that we have a lot of vineyards down there mm -hmm. uh, because we produce a lot of wine in the region, but we yeah. also produce a lot of olive. Mm -hmm. So we say that Provence is the garden of France. Right. because we grow a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables here as well. Yeah. And because we are under the influence of the Mediterranean Sea, so we have a Mediterranean climate here. Uh -huh. So it's a nice place to be, a <laughs> nice place to live, and it attracts a lot of people. Yeah. This region of France has loads on offer. And with so many scenic free choice options to choose from, today I thought I might do something a little different. The Rhone River has been my home for the last week and it travels about 800 kilometres all the way from the Swiss Alps. But as it comes down through this area here, a lot of tributaries and other rivers join it. So this afternoon, I'm exploring one of those rivers on a slightly smaller vessel. This is the Gardan, a small river that flows into the Rhone and a great spot for a kayak. What type of people get to come on these kayaking? Uh, so this is a quiet river. Uh -huh. the, uh, and uh, all people uh, can uh, ride on this river. It's very uh, easy. So very young all the way through to yeah. older people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think if you come and do this, the trick is you've got to try to keep your canoe or kayak going straight down the river. Because if you turn sideways a little bit, the water grabs hold of you and pushes you off. It's an incredibly easy river to kayak on, but there are a couple of fast flowing sections. Lining it up. Woo! <laughs> that's how you do it but it's the reward at the end that is the real star attraction. This is the Pont de Garde, a 2000 year old Roman built aqueduct that still stands proud today. It's a masterpiece of ancient architecture and just one of the many wonders of this region. 
I'll give you a secret. The best place on this entire ship is right here on the front deck, having a wine, sailing along the Rhone River and just watching the world go by. It is beautiful. Of course, if you are the active type, there is as much to do on board as there is on shore. The culinary experience is just extraordinary. And if you want to learn a couple of the secrets and also take home a little bit of French knowledge, Scenic Culinaire is the place to do it. Johnny, what are we cooking today? David, today we're going to do our classic, traditional recipe, coco van. So, what contain of root vegetables. Mm -hmm. Then we add the bacon. So what do you think it is? What's the secret to getting the, the French flavours right? We usually use a lot of butter here in France. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there is no food without butter. But French food is more than just butter. A uh, little bit more. So, David, here is the, here is the chicken was already marinated for 10 hours. The chicken takes the flavour of the wine, the local wine which we are using. Now, we will add the cognac, mm -hmm. which also gives an amazing flavor to the dish itself. And now we will add the, the wine. Okay. And the vegetables. <laughs> and voila, as simple as that. Simple as that. This is definitely my kind of cooking class. If you find that you weren't concentrating quite enough, you can always take home the recipe with you all the way back to Australia. Bon appetit. <laughs> Nearby, the hilltop village of Le Beau has one of the most impressive panoramas of this entire region. Sitting up here on top of the hill, Le Beau is just wonderful, isn't it? For me, it's been uh, for 30 years magical, I can yeah. say, truly. Uh, the emotion of being way up there, as if you were uh, mastering the, um, the entire countryside. Uh -huh. it's, Emotional, for me at least, <laughs> as a guide. Le Beau is the site of an ancient castle carved into the limestone cliffs of this region. But it's also where the core ingredient of aluminium was first discovered. They used uh, a stone here uh, at first because of the colour. Uh, inside that stone, that later will be called bauxite because it's discovered nearby Le Beau. Like the surrounding landscape, over the centuries, the stones of the castle itself have been extracted and dismantled. But one thing that can never be stolen is the view. And this is it on top of the world. Absolutely. Oh, That's where you have that, that uh, fantastic uh, emotion about domination. And the landscape is so precious for me, at least. And what a spot, I guess, for the, for the owners and the, and the power. To be able to look Absolutely. Out. These days, the wonders of Le Beau are not just found on top of the mountain, they can also be found beneath. This is Carrière de Lumière, an old quarry that's been transformed into this incredible light show. Now, the canvas is 7,000 metres squared of limestone walls. That's the equivalent of 14,000 Mona Lisas. Stretching from floor to ceiling, this captivating visual journey showcases masterpieces of renowned artists throughout history. With the exhibition changing every year. Wow, that really is magnificent. The great thing about France is that you don't just find art in the Louvre here. You also find it in Old Quarry. A gourmet barbecue like this is just the fuel needed to explore the charming village of Vivier. Vivier is a medieval town that sits right on the banks of the Rhone River. 
This was all covered with water and it was dangerous to build houses here. Mm -hmm. So the village has stayed as it is since the 13th century. Right. So 800 years, nearly no change. Most of the houses are from that time. Overlooking the town is the magnificent St. Vincent Cathedral. But it's down amongst the cobblestone streets that the story of Vivier comes alive. So this is a very special street here. And you will notice that the pattern is always the same. So there is one big door, uh -huh. small door. Yeah. And then again, one big door, small door. Usually there were workshops here, mm -hmm. either the owner of the house or somebody renting the workshop and presenting all his goods out here. Okay. Because people would never go into the workshop because there was no pavement here. It was earth and there was no toilet. So oh. in the morning, they would pour out oh, no. <laughs> their stuff. So, you so this wear... would have just been disgusting. Exactly. Vivier is a town of hidden courtyards and houses carved into the hillside, with many secrets behind closed doors. David, look at that house. This is a very special house, and we will discover something very special in here. During World War II, resistance uh, groups special. were active throughout German-occupied France. Step in, David. Have a look oh, at that. Like this. What is this little secret corridor? So during the Second World War, people were hiding in there. So the door that you can see on the other side didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So they were hiding from what, the German the invasion? German, yeah, the Gestapo. Wow. This region of France holds many secrets. And about an hour away in the Ardèche National Park, there is one of the biggest hide holes you will ever see. The natural landscapes here in France are quite incredible. You know, you stand up here like this and just such an amazing view. This is an amazing view here. You are right in the heart of the Ardèche here. Mm -hmm. So it's a very popular place in the summer over here because people come here to canoe and there's mm. lots of outdoor activities. And this is a place, as you can see, and there's lots of limestone, so they're all those cliff are dot with caves. The Madeleine Caves are some of the most grand and accessible in France. Here we oh, are. Wow. This is incredible, Valerie. It is. They were discovered in 1887 by a shepherd who was searching for his lost goat. Now he had to walk for a while with his candle in the dark, completely in the dark. Did he find the goat in the end? Yes, he did, hey. actually, and found this beautiful place. Stalactites and stalagmites sprout from the surfaces. But it's the Madeleine Cave's limestone curtains that are truly astonishing. They actually grow at one centimetre every hundred years. Wow. You know, we're just passing through this place. Huh? Wow. We live only 100 years and they grow one centimetre. Wow. So if you, if you see those curtains six metres high, Mm. It puts it all in perspective, doesn't it? Yes. Now, if you come down to the bottom of the cave system, there's 250 steps that you need to navigate. And just remember, there's 250 on the way back up as well. You can't come to Lyon without exploring one of their most famous artisan crafts. And it's also a great place to get a present for family and friends back at home. As I learned earlier in the trip, Lyon is the birthplace of cinema, but the Lumiere brothers' invention also had an effect on Lyon's traditional silk trade. And one local workshop still uses this method. It's made using, um, using a technique that was created by the Lumiere brothers between the 1920s and 1930s, which mm -hmm. works with a negative, a bit like the photo. Right. Do it in a black room and everything. Broyeur series is one of only two companies left in France who still prints silk this way. And since this is all done by hand, is there some irregularities and, I guess, uniqueness to each of your prints? Yeah, there might be, 
but uh, that's what I'm aiming for. <laughs> Gabrielle and the team print 7,000 metres of silk like this every year. I love it because first we still work by hand, which is very, not very common. Mm -hmm. And also because I always have a love of colour and textile. Mm -hmm. I was working in the bank before entering the workshop, so I learned from scratch. Right. So eventually I feel lucky about my, uh, the possibility I have to be working in such a place. Yeah. And to be also defending um, something which is definitely linked to the history of the, of the city. Lyon is a city full of stories. And of course, Scenic have one more special treat to enrich my visit. Right in the heart of Lyon, this is Trinity Chapel, which is a 500-year-old church. But tonight, it is the scene of a very special performance. In this grandest of Baroque buildings, this exclusive performance highlights the power and purity of the human voice. No microphones, no instruments. Just a simple a cappella choir. you could spend a lifetime discovering new wonders in southern France. But there's one final place I've been dying to see, just half an hour out of Lyon. I love these little French villages where you feel like you step straight onto a movie set. This is Perouge, over a thousand years worth of history, and as you're walking the cobblestone streets, you're transformed back into the Middle Ages. Now, the best thing, though, is that you never know what's around the next corner. Originally, Perouge was inhabited by craftsmen, farmers, and weavers, who possibly came from Perugia in Italy. For hundreds of years, Perouge was a vibrant and bubbling village until about the 19th century when the railways and the freeways bypassed this region, essentially leaving it marooned in time. In the early 20th century, wealthy people from Lyon rediscovered this charming village. I've heard that this is something that you have to try when you're here in Peru. And Martin's family opened a patisserie here selling a local delicacy, a Peru galette. It's my grandfather's grandmother who, who made up this, uh, this particular recipe. And it's a very simple one. It's only uh, uh, brioche bread with butter and sugar. So lots of sugar? Lots of butter, <laughs> lots of sugar. The French way. Uh, yeah, and uh, very good quality uh, butter from, from here. We, we call it uh, braise butter. Thank you very, very much. Bon appétit. Yeah, awesome. I cannot wait. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. Hope you enjoy it. It's amazing how the French can just turn a few simple ingredients into something so timeless. <laughs> This last two weeks has just been incredible. Of course, this whole region's all about the culinary scene, the food and the wine. But for me, it's also about the diversity of the experiences that we've had that really give you an incredible taste of France. So from the scenic sapphire to these wonderful experiences out here in the countryside, it's au revoir.